Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I'm very, very excited for today's video because we're gonna react to Prophet Mohammed, the greatest man in history, mind-blowing speech by Sheikh Khalid Yassin. If you've guys been following this channel, you know that I read the whole Quran and started reading some hadiths right now. However, I know very, very little about the man Mohammed. If we're talking about Islam, Islam. People ask me, why didn't you take your Shahada already? Guys, it is true. I do agree with Tawheed, the oneness of God. But in order to declare that Muhammad is the prophet of God, I have to learn so much more about him. At the moment, I'm reading the book Muhammad, His Life, based on the earliest sources by Martin Lynx. Additional to my studies, to my readings, I would love to watch this video with you. Yet again, let me know in the comment section if you want me to continue with this work. And now, let's have a look. A man by the name of Michael Hart, he said, and who was Michael Hart? Michael Hart was a contemporary historian and mathematician. And he gathered other historians and biographers together. And they said, let us compile a list of the hundred most profound human beings in history. Okay. And to make a long story short, they made a category. They set up 32 different categories by which to compare and produce these hundred most great profound human beings. And let me tell you what Michael Hart said. He said that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He placed him at the head of his list. I just had to stop it there out of curiosity. So number one is Muhammad followed by Isaac Newton, then Jesus Christ. And number four is Buddha. I would really love to see the whole list and know the criteria behind it. And those with him could not dispute it because categorically he earned that position. And Michael Hart said, I would have chosen, I would have liked to choose Jesus Christ because I'm a Christian. But there were several categories that honestly I could not choose him because Jesus Christ was not a father. Muhammad he was. Jesus Christ was not a husband. Muhammad he was. Jesus Christ was not a statesman. Muhammad he was. Jesus Christ was not a warrior. Muhammad he was. And Jesus Christ was not a ruler. Muhammad he was. All right, so out of that description, I will have to assume that they were looking for attributes of influence. And so Michael Hart and his other collaborators, they said, the greatest human being that has impacted history and all annals of documented history, it had to be Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that statement you will find. The greatest human being that has impacted history and all annals of documented history, it had to be Muhammad. Peace be upon him. I truly hope that he will talk about that impact because I honestly want to learn about Muhammad. Let's continue. You will find it in the archives. Okay. of the Time magazine, of the New York Times, the magazine they put out, it's in their archives, you can read it. And in some of the bookstores here in Australia, other places, or you can go on the website and put in Michael Hart, and you will get a website, put it into Google, and you'll get it, and you'll see the evidence there. All right, let's Google Michael Hart. So we are on the Wikipedia page, the 100 ranking of the most influential persons in history. The 100 ranking of the most influential persons in history is a 1978 book by Michael H. Hart, an astrophysicist, alien life researcher and white separatist. 
Well, that doesn't sound too good, does it? It was published by his father's publishing house, it was his first book and was reprinted in 92 with revisions. It is a ranking on the 100 people who, according to Hart, most influenced human history. Unlike various other rankings at the time, Hart explicitly wasn't attempting to rank on greatness as a criterion, but rather how the course of human history most changed due to the actions of that person. So as you can see here in the description, it's not about the greatness, but rather how the course of human history has changed. Again, guys, as I always say in my videos, I'm giving you an honest reaction. I'm not here to please people. I'm not doing it for likes. I really want to learn. Now reading that Michael Hart was a white separatist and an alien researcher that didn't even take greatness as a criteria, I of course cannot take this as a valuable source. Nevertheless, here you can see the list. Mohammed is number one, Isaac Newton number two, Jesus number three, followed by the Buddha, Confucius, Paul of Tarsus, Shah Lun, Johannes Gutenberg, Christopher Columbus, and Albert Einstein. Let's continue with the video. But let me read to you what some others have said. Yes, please. About Muhammad, the man and his message. George Bernard Shaw said, if a man like Muhammad وسلم, were to assume the dictatorship and rulership of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems that would bring it much needed peace and happiness. With this statement, I can agree, even though I'm very ignorant on that subject, from what I learned about Muhammad is that Arabia during his time was in constant infighting. Those Arab tribes were mostly pagan and were attacking each other. Muhammad brought peace to those people. Michael Hart said, my choice is Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others, but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. With that I would agree as well. And Castles Weekly said, in little more than a year, he was actually the spiritual, nominal and temporal ruler of Medina with his hands on the lever that was to shake the world. Billions of Muslims all over the world throughout the last 1400 years have accepted the religious teachings of Muhammad وسلم, and illiterate often brought up in the harsh desert climate of Arabia transformed a backward society into a great civilization. He was the only leader who realized his vision in his own life. He was born in Mecca as an orphan. He was raised in Mecca. He was driven out of Mecca. He was punished, had to flee. He was persecuted. His followers were killed. But Allah allowed him to come back 23 years later as a victor, as a conqueror. And when he came back, he gave everyone amnesty. That's both. He realized his vision. And after that, the Prophet ﷺ spread his message. He spread Islam throughout the peninsula of Arabia so that Islam became established as a state, as a government. He was the ruler but he was still eating and drinking and dressing the same way that he was doing as he was born and as he grew up. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was just and he was fair. He didn't give to his family. He didn't distribute to his friends. He didn't make judgment for those who he liked and made judgments against those he didn't like like the kings, like the presidents, like the chairmen, like the rich people, like the judges of today and like those who have done it throughout history. This was a man in this world but always thinking about the hereafter because Allah sent to him the ayah Al-Akhiratu Khayrun wa Abqa 
the Akhirah is better for you and for everyone else than what is present. Nothing in this world can compare with the hereafter. His message was to call humanity to the worshipping of the Creator and to destroy all kinds of injustice in the earth and to establish a character, a paradigm of human conduct for the human beings to follow. If one reads the Quran, you will see on every page that message comes through on every single page. I would absolutely agree. This is what sets Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, from any other ruler, any other prophet, messenger, individual. The Prophet wasalam, never in his life did he ever lift his hand to hit any human being, ever. Not a servant, not a wife, not a child, not a friend, nor an enemy, except when that enemy was opposing Allah and opposing the message. So here I will have to do my own reading or you guys can tell me as well in the comment section. He said explicitly that Muhammad never hit anybody, not his wife, not his children, not even his enemy. But then he goes on and says if they didn't agree with the message of Allah. So my question here is, did Muhammad hit people, yes or no? Opposing the message. And when the companions of the Prophet وسلم, used to look for him on the battlefield, they said, Wallahi, we found him in the middle of the enemies, fighting. Okay, so if he was fighting, I have to assume that he was hitting people. And they said, we used to seek the protection of his person. We used to hide behind the Prophet وسلم, on the battlefield. He was such a warrior and statesman on the battlefield, commanding and fighting for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once he was off the battlefield, his eyes were downcast and he was speaking softly and he was gentle and he was warm and he was sacred and soft and caring and crying. The Prophet وسلم, was also during the course of that day feeding the poor, visiting the sick, discharging the army, acting as a statesman, acting as an arbiter, talking to the people, addressing the women, giving out the zakat, sewing his clothes, washing his house, shopping for the food, doing all the things that you and I do and at night standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time and in the day fighting the battles discharging the armies giving the ahkam and the rulings explaining the quran instructing the people in behavior how could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time. What kind of human being could that be? It was a messenger. It was a prophet. This was a man with a message. Oh, Muslims and non-Muslims. Muhammad, according to the Quran, he was a witness over the believers. He was no more than a messenger. He was a man dealing gently with all people. He was a great favor. He was sent with an irrefutable truth. He was that unlettered prophet. He was a mercy and a messenger. He was a mercy to mankind. He was a witness over the believers and the believers a witness over mankind. He was a mercy to the world. He was the best example to follow. He was the last prophet of mankind. He was sent to all the mankind and the jinn. He was victorious over all systems and he was created on an exalted standard. O oh, Muslims and non-Muslims, there's not a person in the whole of history that can compare with Muhammad not a Confucius, 
not Guantama Buddha, not Alexander the Great, not Bonaparte Napoleon, not Julius Caesar, nor Constantine, not Mahatma, not Mahatma Gandhi, not King Richard or King Ferdinand, not Winston Churchill, not Charles Darwin, nor Deng Xiaoping, nor Karl Marx. Definitely not Karl Marx. Not Albert Einstein, not Martin Luther or Martin Luther King Jr. Not George Washington, not John F. Kennedy, and certainly not Bill Clinton. Not Tony not Blair, nor no John Howard, nor George Bush Sr. Or Those are the worst kinds of people, why do you list them? George Bush Jr. Not you, not me, not our parents, nor our grandparents, nor any of our ancestors can match this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the non-Muslims, I say to you, go home and read about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tonight. I will. If you dare. I do. If you're not afraid of change, because if you read about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with an open heart and an open mind, there's a chance that love for this man and respect for this man will come into your life, come into your heart, come into your mind, come into your family and your home, and you also may want to be a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you should choose to do so, you will never elevate his name. You will never increase any blessings to his ummah, but you will benefit your own selves. And so we invite you to embrace, to understand, to respect that man Muhammad sallallahu and his message. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Very interesting. However, only scratched the surface. Now I have to verify those statements and I have to do my own reading in the hadiths and in the biography of the Prophet Muhammad. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.